Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be making our footer into a sticky footer. So you can see down here that our footer is sticking to the bottom of the page. Now, right now we have our footer and it's just directly below the content of the page. It's not sticking to the bottom of the page. So in this video we're going to make it stick to the bottom of the page. So we're going to take a look at the sticky footer post right here. So this is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to continue styling the blog by making the footer component we created in the ViewPress Tutorial 8 custom footer into a sticky footer. So right here, you can take a look at this ViewPress Tutorial 8 custom footer post if you haven't set up the custom footer yet. Now, we were going to be adding a highlight effect when hovering over the SVG icons in this tutorial as well. But that process is a little more involved than I remembered, so we're going to be adding the highlight effect when hovering in the next tutorial. Now you want to make sure that you have the local development server started, which should be running at localhost port 8080. So like you saw over here, I have it running, and I have it running down here in this terminal. So you want to make sure that you have that up and running. So you can see all the changes that we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing, then you want to try to restart your local development server. And you can view all of the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 11 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come here and you can take a look at the code right here. All right, so let's get into what a sticky footer is. All right, so a sticky footer adheres or sticks to the bottom of the browser window, assuming there isn't enough content on the page to push the footer lower, like on this blog post, for example. So on this page, we have enough content on this page that it takes up the full browser window. So our footer gets pushed all the way down here to the bottom of the page. Now, if the content on the page is short, like on the home page, then the footer will stick to the bottom of the page instead of appearing directly below the content above it. So if we come back to the home page here and let me just zoom out. So you can see right here that our content doesn't take up the full browser window. It just takes up right here. So our footer component down here, is just gonna to stick to the bottom of the page. All right, so let's go back to our post. Now, let me zoom back in here. Now there are multiple ways to add a sticky footer to your site, but we're only going to discuss how to use the CSS calc function and if you're interested in learning about the other ways of adding a sticky footer, then you can check out this post right here, Sticky Footer Five Ways. So this is a post by CSS Tricks, and you can come here and look at the different ways that they've implemented the sticky footer. All right, so let's get into the sticky footer styling. So here's what the index.style file is going to look like after adding the sticky footer styling. So if we come over here to our index.style file, which I've opened over here, let me just close out of that window. Now what we want to do is we just want to add this right here. So I'm just going to copy this. Let me come back over here and I'll just be pasting this in. And then I'm going to just shift all of this in. And then we'll save this file. Now right here we've added inside of the body tag we've added this theme container class and we've set a minimum height to be this calc function with the value of 100 bh minus this 10.3125 rem. All right, so this is what we've added and then we've shifted in all of these other classes right here and all of these other styles. All right, so like I said, here we added that min height calc 100 bh minus that 10.3125 rem to the div tag with a class of theme container. So if you inspect the browser and you go to the elements tab, you can see where the div tag with a class of theme container is in the HTML of the blog. So that theme container class, that class is provided by ViewPress. So here's the HTML. If you were to inspect the page and if you opened up the body tag and you went inside of the, the div tag right here with an ID of app, and then you go inside of the global layout here, then you could see this theme container right here. I'll make this a little bit bigger here. So you can see this theme container class right here. And then underneath of that is our footer tag with the class of footer. So if we were to come back to the site and if we inspected the page, then you could see that if we come over here 
you can see that we have our body tag that our div tag with the ID of app and then our global layout. And then we have this div tag right here with our theme container. Now this theme container up here is what holds this header tag right here for the nav bar. It has the div tag for the sidebar. This is side tag for the sidebar as well, which we haven't used the sidebar yet, but we'll be doing that in a future tutorial. And then we also have our main tag right here with the class of home. And then inside of there is where we have our header tag, which has our logo, our site title, our description, and then that action button that we've worked on before. And then we have our features down here. And then underneath of all of this, we have right underneath of this theme container right here, we have our footer tag. All right. So like I said, that div tag with the class of theme container that contains all of the content of the blog, except for the footer tag. So here we're using that min height with the calc function right here, where we take 100 VH minus that 10.3125 rem to set the minimum height of the content inside of the div tag with that class of theme container to be 100 VH minus that 10.3125 rem, which is the height of the footer component, including the top and bottom padding. So if you come back over here, and if you took a look at this footer component, and let me just move that down so you can see it, all the padding right there. And let me just move myself up. So if we were to come down over here, you could see that we have a top padding of 40. And then the height of that footer is going to be about 93 pixels. And then we have 32 pixels for the bottom padding. And if you were to add all that up and then convert that to rem, that's where we get that 2.3125 rem value from. So that is the height of this footer right here including the padding. All right, so that's where that value comes from. Now, the unit of VH is relative to 1% of the height of the viewport, which is the browser window size. So 100 VH is 100% of the height of the viewport. So if you come over here, this right here, this whole page is the browser window, and then 100 VH is 100% of the browser window. So then one VH would just be 1% of the browser window size. Now, this means that when we subtract this rem value from the 100 VH, that we're subtracting the height of the footer component from 100% of the viewport height. And remember that that height of the footer component includes the top and bottom padding as well. All right, so this means the minimum height of the content inside of the div tag with the class of theme container will be the entire homepage height minus the height of the footer component. So. That means that we are taking this height right here of this footer component right down here, and we are subtracting it from 100% of the viewport height. All right. So after setting this style, you'll notice how the footer component is now pushed to the bottom of the page. And this is how we get the footer component to stick to the bottom of the page. And also since we added this style to the index.style file, this style will be applied globally globally to the blog, which is fine since the footer component will be used on every page in the blog. Since our footer component, we want that to be a global component that's on every page in the blog. So you can see here that our footer component is now sticking to the bottom of the page. So now we have that sticky footer that we wanted. Now here we are using a fixed footer size. So we're using a fixed size for the height of the footer component, which means if we change the height later on, we'll have to update this value. Now in a future tutorial, we'll be changing the height, so we'll have to update this value. But if you prefer to not have to update this value whenever you update the height of the footer component, then it may be worth looking into implementing the flexbox or grid methods for adding a sticky footer, which you can find in the sticky footer five ways post. So you can come here and you can check out the way that they implemented it with Flexbox and the way that they implement it with grid and then you won't have to rely on using that fixed height for the footer and then you can see if you can get it to work in the block here. Now I'm just using this way because right now I don't mind just updating those values um, and because after I, I set them later on I don't really plan on changing them but you know it would be nice if, if you didn't have to do that so would be nice to have this working but it's fine the way that it is for now. 
And if you have any questions about the CSS discussed above, then you can check out these resources. So if you're unsure about that min height property, you can come here and check out the CSS min height property, this page right here. And then if you want to learn more about the calc function, then you can come to this page. And then we also have a link to CSS values and units. So if you're a little bit unsure about the rem values, and if you're a little bit unsure about those viewport values, that VH value that we use, then you can come here to learn a little bit more about that. All right, so the next steps are, as I mentioned in the beginning of the post, in the next tutorial, we are going to be adding a highlight effect when hovering over the SVG icon. So if you come here, when we hover over these SVG icons down here, we're going to have a hover effect. So if I come over here to the post, if I come down here, you can see that when we hover over, they turn to an orange color. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video.